Geelong is a seaport on the shores of Corio Bay. Its population of 90,000 has increased at the rate of more than 5,000 a year for the last eight years, making it one of the fastest growing cities in Australia and the largest provincial city in Victoria. The new buildings, the busy streets and up-to-date stores and shops reflect the city's prosperity, for Geelong is a centre of primary and secondary industry in one of the richest and most productive land areas in Australia, the Western District of Victoria. class rail and road connections to all parts of the state, Geelong is the trading centre and the natural outlet for the produce of the surrounding countryside. It's the second city of Victoria and, apart from the state capitals, one of the biggest in Australia. Geelong was declared a city in 1910 and its adopted motto, by the right use of God's gifts, is suited to a city which has made good use of its natural endowments. To provide housing for Geelong's growing population, the State Housing Commission, together with private enterprise, have built nearly 10,000 homes in the past 10 years. And the building rate continues with the growth of the city. By Australian standards, Geelong would be called an old city. Yet, little more than 100 years ago, this was virgin country known only to the Aborigines. The first settlers were looking for good sheep country. They sailed from Sydney and from Hobart and landed their flocks on the protected shores of Corio Bay. Close by, a little settlement grew, a place they called Geelong, after the Aborigines' name for the area. the settlers had chosen well. Within a few years, the name of Geelong became famous as the home of Australia's finest wool clips. Sheep are still the biggest single industry with an annual income of 45 million pounds. The first wool sale in 1857 sold 449 bales of wool. Today, from the Western District, and from as far north as the New South Wales border, 450,000 bales a year feed into the huge wool stores for classing and sorting. Back 
fat stock and dairy cattle supply meat and dairy produce for the Geelong market as well as boosting the export trade. The dry, mild climate is well suited for bloodstock studs too, and many well-known Australian racehorses have been bred in the district. One of Geelong's more unusual industries is the Leopold bulb farm. From specially bred strains of ranunculus, tulips, anemones and hyacinths, corms and seeds are collected and packed at the dispatch all over the world. Hay and grain crops are grown on most farms and conserved as fodder to give better feeding for sheep and cattle over the dry summer months. Geelong is the largest shipping terminal for the Victorian wheat crop. 30 million bushels are exported annually, more than half of Victoria's total wheat production. 24 million bushels can be stored in the huge grain silos on Corio Bay for export to the world's markets. The products of primary industry have long been the basis of Geelong's prosperity. But the city's rapid expansion in recent years is due more to the growth of secondary industry. New buildings dominate the city skyline. Great industrial plants have been built along the harbour foreshores and in the nearby countryside. In 10 years, power consumption has increased from 36 million to 140 million kilowatt hours per year. The city that was built on wool and wheat now employs 20,000 workers in secondary industry. Geelong's total employment and output make it the most industrialised city in Australia per head of population. There's plenty of space for further industries and plenty of power for new industries and homes. The city has plans for a population of 150,000 and the development of satellite centres. One of the main reasons for Geelong's rapid development is the improved port facilities. In 1938, the gross shipping trade was one million tonnes a year. 
Today, it's over 4 million tonnes and increasing each year. The Harbour Trust has widened and deepened shipping channels, built wharves and cargo sheds, provided land for new industries and built new heavy-duty cranes and tugs. The port of Geelong is today a deep-water port for the ships of the world. Once a year, Geelong holds its gala procession and carnival in aid of the hospital. The temperate climate offers opportunities for sport and recreation the whole year round. Eastern Beach Swimming Pool is right on the city's doorstep. Only a few miles away are some of the best surfing beaches in Australia. Torquay, Anglesey, Ocean Grove and Point Lonsdale, surf club patrols watch over the safety of bathers. The protected waters of Carayo Bay provide ideal conditions for the Royal Geelong Yacht Club. Darwin River, often the site of the Victorian Public School's Head of the River Race, is also the training ground for the local rowing clubs. Close to the city, there are recreation grounds catering for all forms of sports. Children are special people, and it's difficult to imagine any more fortunate than those who grow up in Geelong, with its wide range of education, from kindergarten to higher technical schools. In addition to free state schools and high schools, there are many private day and boarding schools. Their high standard of education attracts pupils from all over Australia and overseas. The Hermitage and the Morongo School for Girls. Geelong Grammar, St Joseph's College and Geelong College, schools that are household names throughout Australia. Gordon Institute of Technology has 1,300 students receiving higher trade and technical training. 
the Institute has the only textile college in Australia carrying out full-time diploma courses and has many overseas students among its pupils. The little settlement that began on the shores of Corio Bay has come a long way since 1836. From bare paddocks fringing a lonely shore, it has grown to a great industrial centre, a major seaport and the second city of Victoria, the city of Geelong. 